What's up YouTube? It's Lenny from Simon Says Resell. I wanted to uh, make a quick video about a very important topic that I wanted to uh, give a little more explanation about and at least some tips and tricks on kind of how to approach it and just st stress again, you know, it's extremely important. At least that's what I believe um, to be successful when you try to sell um, on, on Amazon specifically. And you know, if you haven't thought about this yet, um, what I'm talking about is a, uh, a business plan or a business model. Making sure that uh, you have some sort of guideline, some sort of process, some sort of, you know, boundaries that you've kind of come up with to be successful. Now you will make mistakes, you will run into roadblocks, you will have issues um, with your business plan. It just happens, that's just kind of how it is. But one of the key takeaways from that is not only learn from your mistakes and everything like that, but also learn and take note of your successes. All of the you know positives, all of the you know high fives, all the wins that you gain during this process, keep those in mind too because one, it's motivation. It only kind of keeps you going more. Um, but two, it kind of gives you maybe a, another look into what to focus on more. You know, if you're successful in one area, maybe try to expand on that success and be even more successful. So it's not just all about failures when you're trying to adapt and learn something. You know, keep in mind of those successes because those can help you along the way. Um, so yeah, so a business plan, a business model, process model, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm just going to call it a business model for now because, you know, it's kind of the term that's been used a lot here in these videos. Um, but when you think business, don't get too scared. You know, don't think about, oh, I have to create an LLC or a company name or do taxes and everything. That can come later, but don't worry about it right now. Um, if you're thinking about selling on Amazon, if you're thinking or, or if you're already selling on Amazon um, and you haven't thought about this yet, definitely do. It's, it's you know, get a piece of paper, you know, type it on the computer, you know, a couple steps. I'm going to go through very high level. It's not all of them. I'm going to make a, quick, a separate video, uh, maybe breaking this up a little bit to kind of go in more in depth for you, but I ultimately wanted to start you off with a very high level kind of checklist on one side of the equation. And what I mean by one side of the equation is the point where you um, decide what you're going to do and to the point where you have the book in hand or the item in hand um, that you bought that you want to resell. So after that comes the fulfillment part and sending it to Amazon. But we're not going to get into that in this video. I just want to kind of focus on one side of the equation. And I say books because that's what I have experience in. If you look at my recent posts on Twitter, on Simon Says Resell, or on Facebook, you'll see I put a snapshot of my recent sales for January. And right now it's January 25th. And um, I've done over $3,000 in sales just well, mainly with books 90 something percent with books and I think that's huge that's awesome I, I know it's working um, as far as profit goes you know I make I probably take home like 60 percent of that so you do the math that's kind of what I've done but in my opinion in order to be successful in any business really but you know specifically with this because that's what we're talking about here is you have to come up with a plan you have to come up with some sort of vision on what to focus on you know create targets create goals whatever it is um, it's extremely important so let me let me get into this really quick I don't want this to be too long of a video my first couple of videos have been you know, over 30 minutes long and I apologize for those that seem that that's too long but I guess I'm so excited I have a lot to talk about and I'll be kind of shortening them you know when appropriate so this one's more of like hey guys I thought of this and you know, while I was driving and I really wanted to kind of plant the seed in your minds so you can start thinking about it as well. So the very first thing that you need to do is ask yourself and answer yourself, is this something you wanna do? Do you wanna sell on Amazon? Yes or no? I, I'm guessing yes, because that's maybe one of the reasons why you're watching this video, but that's something you gotta ask yourself. Is this something you wanna do? Whether it's just extremely, extremely part-time, like almost like a hobby to part-time, or even full-time. Um, whichever one you what you think you want to do, just kind of decide on that, you know, for now. 
Um, it may change. You may start off uh, part time and it may go to full time. You may start off full time. You may go to part. Who knows? But ultimately, I want you guys to kind of motivate yourselves and just logically think that I'm going to be doing this. Set yourself a goal. This is what I've decided to do. Tell all your friends, tell all your family what you're doing. Because one another side of this is the support system that you'll hopefully get, um, and is really helpful when making a decision like this. You know, whether it's you know going to school for a degree, studying for a certification, doing something amazing, you know, some sort of accomplishment. Having the support of your friends and family is, you know, extremely beneficial. It's priceless. So that's one of the things I did. Is for me, for myself, kind of awareness. I said, you know what? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it until I know for sure that it's not gonna work out, or until I fail, whatever, or fail miserably. But you know, failure is not an option for me most of the time. So I, I try to go above and beyond um, when I can. Anyway, support system is extremely important. Tell your friends and family. So that's kind of number one is self-awareness and a support system. Not only yourself, but your friends and family. The second thing is that's kind of when we start diving into um, more of the Amazon world. So the, the second step I would probably look into is what type of Amazon seller account you're going to be creating. So Amazon, to, to make all this happen, to sell all your items, to look at how much they are, are, are you're reselling them for, to list them, that all happens in a... A portal you know called Amazon seller central with that type of portal that account there's two types of accounts you can do there's the regular account and there's a pro account professional account the professional account is about forty dollars a month it has a bunch of benefits and perks to it um, as opposed to the standard one you know it's it doesn't cost as much but they take a bit more out on your your uh, your fees and stuff like that so I'll try to dive in a little more about that later, but I just want to kind of keep you, bring that to your attention. Create a seller account, whether it's pro or not. Um, look at the details, and I'll try to do another quick video soon to kind of sh explain it more, but if you just Google Amazon seller account benefits or highlights, whatever, you'll you'll find some information. So get a seller account. Get it signed up. You know, get, get this ball rolling. Once you get a seller account, you then have to ask yourself, um, before you do anything else, what type of fulfillment or shipping do you want to do there's two types there's merchant fulfilled and there's Amazon fulfilled which is also known as FBA fulfilled by Amazon fulfillment by Amazon so merchant or, or FBA which one do you choose I don't know maybe you don't know and that's fine but I'm here to explain it more to you and other videos that I'll be creating will explain it even further and I did mention in a few other videos that I've done already um, merchant fulfilled in a nutshell is you keep inventory in your own house or your own warehouse. You pick it, you pack it, you ship it when it sells. You handle the customer service, and the fees, yeah, the fees maybe may not be as much, and it's kind of negotiable as far as comparing the two. Um, I have my own opinion; other people's have their own, but that's kind of mainly merchant. Merchant is you're the merchant; you handle everything basically. Um, yeah, so that could work for some people, and some people it might not. I started off as a merchant because that was the you know, least expensive, you know, minimal risk way of trying this whole Amazon selling thing with, with books mainly out. So if you want to follow the same steps I did, I'll be more than happy to guide you. If you don't, I'll be more than happy to guide you to kind of give you other suggestions because I've, I've read a lot and researched a lot so I have some ideas myself. But Fulfillment by Amazon or fulfill or merchant fulfillment. Those are the two things you kind of got to choose You can do one or the other or both actually at the same time But I would kind of make it as simple as possible and at least amount of expenses in the beginning is go for uh, one um, Maybe merchant maybe FBA whatever so you you choose a fulfillment type um, Okay, so you have you saw you you thought to yourself. I'm gonna do this you signed up a seller account you decided what merchant or what fulfillment method you're going to choose. Okay, what are you going to resell? What do you want to put on Amazon to resell and make money off of? Tons of categories on Amazon to choose from. Which one do you want to choose? It really depends on kind of location, where you live, what your interests are, what are you familiar with, some of your experiences with some of those categories. Um, I chose books, and most people choose books, and I highly recommend starting off with books because... They are um, low risk, you know, very few returns, 
Um, pretty decent profit margins for the most part, and they're easy to ship. So that's kind of a no-brainer. Why wouldn't you do that? So my suggestion is, if you're wondering what to resell, start with books. Now it may depend on where you live. You may live in a place that doesn't have access to many books, and that could be a problem. So maybe maybe you shift to another category. But that's kind of my approach here to kind of help you out um, as best I can. Um, okay, so now you decided books. What books are you gonna resell? What books are you gonna search for and resell? Um, let's start with the very top: nonfiction or fiction. You can ultimately do both. Um, based on my experience and based on other people's videos and, and watching them, nonfiction does better, meaning um, there's more profit to be made. There's more of um, an opportunity there, ultimately. Because with fiction books, you can kind of consider them mass market. You know, like the Twilights and the Harry Potters and the, the romance novels you kind of want to stay away from those unless you get them dirt cheap but even then people are selling them for a penny uh, plus shipping and I'll get into that in another video how they're able to sell them that low or that cheap so what type of books ultimately you want to choose I would start with nonfiction textbooks are huge they can have some potentially large profit margins um, cookbooks are pretty good but you know anything really self-help books how-to books career books, business books, financial books, stock market stuff, um, how to handle your teenager, like that, stuff like that. Um, those are those are great books. Um, some do better than others and you know from experience you just kinda learn that and I will go through that myself in another video. So you chose books, you chose nonfiction to focus on mainly. Now if you come across a deal where you can get your hands on some really cheap fiction books, go for it. What have you got to lose? Some money, but hey, a couple of books and that haul of books that you get cheap may pay for the whole thing and you may even be able to make money on it. For example, I went to um, a book sale the other day and I have a, a little snapshot um, of my haul after the fact in one of my other videos. Um, I got 450 books for $60. So that was pretty good. Um, would I ultimately go for nonfiction books? And those are nonfiction books, by the way. Would I go for them ultimately? No, I wouldn't, but I got a really good deal on it and I was like, what the hell, 60 bucks, 450 books, about 13 cents a book or so. You know, I can sell a couple books and I kind of make up the money, so I'm not too worried about that. So if you come across an opportunity like that, go for it. If not, focus on the nonfiction. All right, so you've decided nonfiction mainly, where do you go? Where do you go to get these books? Do you go to a friend's house? Do you go to Target? Where do you go? Um, many people have their own favorites. My favorite is Goodwill. I live around 12 different Goodwills. The closest one's about two miles away. Um, they at least have 400 books at, at any given time. Um, yeah, at least 400 books at any given time, and it's, it's a pretty good opportunity for me. The next one from there would be Salvation Army. There's only a few of them around me. Um, the books are okay, they don't have as many, but they do have like half off days and stuff. So, um, so it really depends on location. Uh, so if you live somewhere where there's more Salvation Armies than Goodwills, then maybe Salvation Armies are your number one. I try to mix and match the best I can. Um, so other than that, you, know, you have uh, garage sales, thrift stores, things like that. So those can be other opportunities for you as well. Um, so let's say you pick Goodwill, just in this little flow we're going through right now. Okay, so we're going to look for nonfiction books at Goodwill. Once you get there, what do you do? You're standing in front of a bookshelf full of 500 books. What do you do? How do you, how do you know which books to pick? Well, um, the cheapest thing to do is uh, if you have a smartphone like an iPhone or Android, you download the Amazon Seller Central app, which is free. Um, I think with the, with the pro account, it may be free with the other one, but don't quote me there. You may have to, I'll double check on that as well. Um, you download the app, it, it syncs up to your, you know, it's an app that uses your camera. You flip the book around to the barcode in the back, you scan it with the app. It comes up with some information about the book to let you know how popular it is, you know, how much you can sell it for or how much it's selling for. So information like that. There's different variables and attributes involved um, when making a decision. So after you scan the book, you have to make a decision. Is this the book I want to buy to resell? Or am I going to pass this book completely? So some of the attributes that are very important are sales rank. 
Sales rank is like a snapshot in time that kind of tells you when the last time the book sold, whether it was an hour ago or two years ago. So the lower the sales rank number, the better. So if I have a book for 600,000 and if I have a book for 5 million, um, the 600,000 one may have sold in the last week or two, the 5 million one may not have sold for a year or more. So based on your business model, you may choose the 600,000 one of, uh, at, um, as opposed to the 5 million one, but there's other attributes that you gotta look at is the competition, also the profit. You know, Maybe this 5 million ranked book uh, may not be your first choice, but you can sell it for uh, 80 bucks and you bought it for a dollar at Goodwill. So there you go. There's some decent profit. It may not sell right away, but it may be worth just keeping on the shelves um, and, and selling and listing. But the 600,000 rank book may be better for a shorter sale and it may not be as much of a profit. So maybe you only make five, 10, $15, but it's still a decent book. So there's the sales rank, there's competition, how many other people, how many other offers are out there. There's cost of the book itself. Did you pay a dollar or two or more? I tend usually don't pay more than a dollar or two for a book, um, but I have another business. Part of my business model um, that I'm doing now is I hire book sourcers in my areas to go to those many Goodwills and Salvation Armies so I don't have to and I pay them per book based on the app and stuff but I'll get into that that's one huge piece of my business model that's been really really good for me um, less time than I have to spend on at Goodwills I get really good books a week I'm averaging maybe 200 books a week without 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 going to a Goodwill myself so um, pretty good and then there's the shipping costs you know if you buy a textbook it's heavy that costs more to ship so you gotta keep these things in mind so those are the different kind of attributes you gotta think about um, so this is kind of where I want to stop as far as you know the business model from here so this is the first side of the equation you know to the point where you decide you want to do this to the point where you have the book in your hand either deciding to sell it or buy it or not um, the other half of the equation is the fulfillment part it really depends on what method you choose whether it's merchant or FBA and I'll create another video on to separate those two to help you out. So I really hope this helped out a bit to kind of to give you an idea of what the process flow is, you know, the mindset and things like that. Um, I I really hope you guys have some questions. You know, add some questions in the comments. Um, definitely like this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe so you can kind of keep up with the videos as I make them. Um, I really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching this. Again, this is Lenny from Simon Says Resell. And uh, talk to you next time. Bye.